Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our extremely special guest today is Claire Lopez, the Vice President for Research at the Center for Security Policy. She has an extensive Middle East background. She understands uh, what's going on over there, especially in regards to the Islamic Revolution being exported out of Tehran like nobody else, which is why she's our special contributor to ATP Report. Claire, thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Barry, for uh, having me on. Very glad to be with you, as always. Well, let's get going. We have some dramatic news that has taken place in the past week. As the world knows, President Trump took a dramatic action with a drone strike at the airport, taking out several cars, one of which contained the leader of the Quds Force, the Jerusalem Force, and the IRGC in Iran, uh, General Soleimani, generally regarded as the number two guy in the country. Uh, the response from the White House and from Republican leaders has been one of complete satisfaction that the leader of probably the biggest terror network on planet Earth has been dispatched. Uh, unfortunately, the enthusiasm on one side of the aisle in the U.S. Congress is not matched by enthusiasm on the other side. Bernie Sanders, for example, has said that killing Soleimani was the same as if Putin kills dissidents in Russia, as if those equate. Other Democrats have called it an assassination of a world leader. Others question why Trump did it now. Was it the right thing to do? Claire Lopez, what's your take on what happened? Well, the, the attack which uh, took place actually at the Baghdad airport in Iraq this past Friday, almost a week ago now, 3rd of uh, January, 2020, um, was the culmination or, or the high, at that point, a high point of a whole series of events um, in Iraq that had begun with incessant attacks by one of the Iraqi Shiite terror militias called Qatai Hezbollah. And uh, many attacks had, had already happened, but finally uh, they took the life of an American citizen, a contractor, and injured four American troops. That was the red line for President Trump. He ordered uh, the hit against Qasem Soleimani because he, Major General Qasem Soleimani, commanded the Quds Force, which had um, uh, directed, uh, had actually uh, established, and then directed uh, these terror militias Qatar Hezbollah being one of them. And, well, and then followed after uh, the attacks against our, uh, our, 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 our troops, uh, the, the assassination of, of Qasem Soleimani, and then aftermath since then. So before we get into the background of what they think in Tehran, um, let's talk about just the reaction from both sides of the aisle. Was it the right thing to do? Is there any doubt in your mind that this should have happened and when it should have happened? No, no doubt in my mind at all. President Trump had explicitly said his red line was the killing of any Americans. And when that happened, they crossed that red line and he responded as he should, as commander in chief, um, defending Americans and defending um, American uh, sovereignty and, and uh, presence in, in uh, our, our embassy, of course, as well, in, in Baghdad. So Iran is the strict Islamic country of the Shia variety. Um, tell us what their constitution says. Literally embodied in the constitution, there's verbiage about what they're supposed to be doing to export their version of Islam, the Shia variety, and talk to us about that. What is the goal under that constitution um, that might have some background and give our viewers an insight into why they behave the way they do? That's a really important point, Barry. And, and in the Iranian constitution, which is in English, online, translated, it says very clearly that the entire purpose of the existence of the Iranian regime that took power in 1979 is to wage jihad 
in order to establish an Islamic state globally, the world over, under rule of Islamic law. It names the IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, as an ideological army entrusted with that mission of waging jihad and exporting the revolution all over the world. Has anybody read it? I mean, you talk about it like you could pick it up off the internet in 30 seconds. Why isn't this well known as if these people are crazy and did something wacky when in reality what you're telling us is since 1979, it's been their Mein Kampf. We are going to cancel uh, normal relations. We're going to conquer the world. And here's the document that codifies it. Well, you know, it's not just the Constitution either, Barry. Um, in that Constitution, they quote directly from the Quran, verse 860, which says, make ready your power to the utmost of your ability, including steeds of war, to strike terror into the hearts of the enemy. That's in the Constitution. So it's not just the Shiite version or Sunni version. This is Islam. This is what it is. This is what it has always been since at least the 10th century. Um, and, and they quote the Quran for that purpose. I think our Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, has read it. Some of the things he said makes me confident that he has. Perhaps the president also knows this, but you're right. Too many others don't. Well, obviously, it's not just what the Constitution says, but who you get to carry it out. So talk to me a little bit, if you can. Where did General Soleimani fit into this? Obviously, as you said, the head of the Quds Force, um, the Jerusalem Force, as it were, uh, one of their stated missions is to liberate Jerusalem from the infidels, uh, the Jews and Christians that are defiling that holy spot. Um, what were his activities? How does he fit in as, as uh, the role that he just filled uh, <laughs> that now has a new place, uh, a new person in that place? So Qasem Soleimani was born in 1957. Um, he came of age uh, as um, uh, the revolution began in 1979. Uh, he joined the IRGC right off the bat. He was sent to the battlefield uh, in the war between Iran and Iraq in the 1980s, where according to reports, he acquitted himself with uh, great courage and honor. Um, that made his reputation. Um, he moved on later to the Quds Force and in 1998 became commander of the Quds Force. Uh, that means three years before 9-11. So he was the lead Iranian official um, in charge of the Iranian and Hezbollah role uh, in 9-11 and we could go on with the long rap list of, of, of uh, the, the uh, attacks against Americans and America that he was involved in from that point on. So what you're saying is the United States has designated Iran the leading state sponsor of terror in the entire world, and the IRGC and its various proxies, such as Hezbollah, as terror groups. Yes. Therefore, the head terrorist worldwide would have been General Soleimani, am I correct? Yes, exactly. It was his job and the job of the Quds Force to establish and then to arm and fund and train and back um, these many different Shiite proxy militia forces. You named Hezbollah, you could name Hamas as well, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, all of these terror Shiite militias in Iraq that wreaked such havoc with Iranian explosives against our own troops and coalition troops uh, and Iraqis uh, during the, the, the middle 2000s. But that was their job to export the revolution, uh, to, to do that by means of proxy militias, to export Islamic terror. That's what they did. So with that understanding, and obviously you're not giving us this education because there's um, some secret source of information that Claire Lopez gets her hands on. Everybody has access to this information. It's open source, correct? Absolutely. Some of this is contained, for example, in the 9-11 Commission Report of August 2004. A lot of uh, the other uh, pieces of information that I, uh, I have um, for, for, uh, about Qasem Soleimani and the Quds Force and especially the role of Iran and Hezbollah 
together with Al Qaeda in the attacks of 9-11. That comes um, from the Havlish case, again, totally open source, a 9-11 uh, uh, legal case um, in which Judge George Daniel, Southern District of New York, in December 2011, ruled that Iran and Hezbollah were co-responsible with Al Qaeda for the attacks of 9-11. That's all open source. Um, as well as multi a multitude of, of you know, open source reporting about other, other attacks in which um, Iran and Al Qaeda and Hezbollah working together were involved. Uh, you know, the, the uh, Hobart Towers in 1996, East Africa Embassy bombings in 1998, USS Cole in 2000, uh, and on, as we said, 9-11, um, the explosive devices sent into uh, Iraq that shredded, maimed, killed our, our, uh, our people there. On we go. Well, President Trump made it very clear, as did Mike Pompeo this week, that Soleimani and his operatives have been responsible for hundreds of American deaths and thousands of injuries, casualties worldwide, not to mention the terror that's been fermented uh, in other countries. How in the world could anybody in their right mind lament the death of this character? No idea, um, but, but we really need to emphasize that the threat that Soleimani and his Quds force presented and, and, and wielded against America and the United States continues. Um, and in particular, I'll say that uh, Hezbollah, uh, an organization that, that predated Qasem Soleimani's command of the Quds Force, but nevertheless with which he worked directly later, Hezbollah has operational cells all over the United States. And certain key Iranian regime leadership figures have said that that is one possible means by which the regime could consider to take revenge against the United States. Thanks for joining us today on American Truth Report. Um, a special thank you to Claire Lopez for joining us. Please remember to send a text message to 88202 and put the message truth in the report, uh, rather the message to us, and you'll get the ATP report every day or so on your cell phone. Send 88202, the word truth, and you'll be subscribed for free. For ATP report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.